Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Maestro ASK in the 5-Minute Pool on ICC. This is a player who always does the same setup, and it involves an early Fianchetto and then a E4, like a really quick E4. I'm going to try to mess with him and stop E4 for the moment. Uh, it's probably not going to work. I'm almost positive I've done this against him before. <laughs> He'll still play for it, but we'll see how it turns out. He's a, he's a quick player. He makes quick and solid decisions. So I think he's tough to play uh, in Blitz, this player type. Okay, I'm just going to proceed as normal. An early queen to e2. At least we're keeping more pieces on the board this time. Okay, let's just play bishop e7. Important not to overthink the opening. I don't want to do that. Uh, I can play knight c6 and maybe try to get into d4. It's a bit artificial. Usually you'd want the c-pawn in front. I'm actually going to play, huh, okay, so if I take on e4, he has to take with this pawn, knight c6, and he plays c3 almost certainly. Hmm. Okay, let's just do c5. I think this is fine. So if bishop g6 is h4 of our concern. Nah. Let's just do it. So if h4, I'm thinking e5 and strike back in the center and attack that knight. I'm trying to force him to make like an original decision early on. That's my my hope here. So if knight takes d5, knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, queen takes d5, he can chase me with h5, but I just play bishop f5. And that should be reasonable. My bishop's not getting trapped. So I need to play e5 now, though, because h5 was a threat, trapping my bishop. Hmm, he's going to do it this way. All right, well, let's take, because that's forced. And now I can take here, he takes on f4, or I can just take g3. Can't take with the h-pawn, there's a pin down the h-file. So fg, g takes f4, let's say knight c6. Somehow that seems most solid. Let's do that. I think I could have taken there, but then I would have to disrupt my king a bit. I think I like the way that this looks. Yeah, he's playing moves to make sure I don't play knight d4. Uh, knight, hmm, this just looks strong, doesn't it? Attacking the pawn, also threatening knight to g3. He practically has to play queen h2, because this wonders this. Just winning an exchange. Okay, I like exchanges. Hmm. Okay, queen d7, bishop h3. I could take e4. Or I could push d4. Pushing d4 might not be bad. Let's do that. Then there's no tension to worry about on d5. His knight's awkwardly placed on b3. Maybe later I can chase it. Like, actually now, a5, a4 comes to mind. Let's play queen b6. Kind of hinting at a5. I might castle kingside. Even though he's got some open lines over there, this is not out of the question. Okay, let's do this. Behind on the clock, as you can see, I've been trying to be mindful. I've almost been playing with a sense of urgency as far as the clock goes to combat that. Okay, what if knight b4 now? Send that in. Threaten knight takes a2. Ah, oh, he has knight c1. Missed knight c1. Okay, my last move didn't do so much, but hopefully it's okay. Okay, let's just castle this way, connect the rooks. I can go knight c2 check and play knight e3. That's actually probably a good idea. And he can't stop it, because if king d1, I have knight takes a2. Yeah, this works. And then queen b3 check. So that was kind of nifty how that worked out. I actually probably should have played knight c2 check knight e3 on the previous move. That might have lost a pawn, but I think it would have been worth check. it. Because then his bishop would have no longer been defending. Yeah, he's coming with the queen. Makes sense. There's no threat really, though. Let's just play king h8. Queen all the way in. Okay, let's come here. 
You might bring the queen back to g4 or h3. I was thinking about trying to sneak in bishop to g3. Now I can get this move in. d3 is weak. I'm also restricting his king. So he can't go to c2 or d1. Yeah, he just goes right back. Okay, let's do this. Looking to play a3. Queen b5, really? Well, I think this has got to be pretty much just decisive. Do I take first and then play bishop here? Let's just do this right away. He could take c5, but I'm taking f4, and i got to believe that that's just winning. His rook is completely out of play, so long as my queen sits here on b3. Yeah, so we'll take... And also, I think f3 is going to be a bother for him to defend. Yeah, if, say he trades and then plays bishop e2, I have rook h4 looking to play rook h1. Yeah, you know, Kristoff played this same guy recently, and I commented on that video, and I said, I played this dude, and I just don't get why he plays this setup. Like, I don't, I don't know what he sees in it from the white side. It's just kind of like a specialty setup he has. There's, I don't think there's any particular rhyme or reason as to why he plays it. Um, hmm. Can actually play rook h1 here. Rook h1, rook takes, check. King e1, though. No, okay, let's not risk that. Queen, hmm. Okay, let's do this. Yep, he takes. Clock is the only concern now. I mean, I gotta think pushing this is good. Let's just pin him now. Pin him to the second rank. He's got some pawns in the center, but barring those, there's nothing. Okay, let's swing this over. No reason to trade. Queen f2 is an issue. Hmm. So if I take check, uh, don't want to blow this. All right, check. I'm taking. I'm gonna push this pawn. I'm gonna try to make use of these pawns, or this pawn and my other rook pawn, especially. Okay, this is coming next move, h2. I have 20 seconds left, though. That's an issue. <laughs> hmm. d6, h2, d7, rook d8, maybe. Time. Let's do this. Okay, let's do this. This is going to win that guy. Oh, maybe not. Wow. Okay, let's take... Oh, no, he has a check. draw if he does that. He can check. Check. Ah, check on h4. Ah, unbelievable. Check. I didn't notice this resource. He's going to play for a win. That's pretty risky, but... Check. You can always do it because he has a perpetual. Check. Draw. And he's offering a draw. Check. Oh, uh, I guess I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Completely blew that game down the stretch. Yeah, I I kind of relaxed when I won the pawn on f4. I saw that he could take d4 after I played a3. I mean, maybe I should disallow this possibility. King d2 was nice. If not for king d2, he's, I think, totally busted because I'm threatening rook h1 check. Uh, so king d2 is like the only move. But, I mean, given how much material I'm up here and... This position is pretty much in in tatters. Yeah, I'm sure there was an easier way to convert this. You know, it's interesting. Like he's down so much material, but he's offering a trade. Um, I think he did that for uh, time management reasons. Like he knows that I'm getting low on time, and he wants to just remove any danger of me launching an attack and mating him or something. Uh, and maybe he's hoping that if I were to swap on c3, and he could push these pawns and 
maybe drum up some counterplay. Uh, yeah, it got a little dicey after I played queen b6 and kind of took this roundabout way. I mean, if I knew I was going to trade queens a few moves later, I would have just traded on c3 immediately and pushed the pawns. Let's go back and take a look, though. Yeah, I think usually I end up with a setup. Uh, can't recall exactly what I've done against him in the past, but something like... I don't even know how he does it, but he does something like... <laughs> looks so weird to even play this. I think there's like an early knight h3 involved. Uh, let's just say I play something like this. Yeah, he does something like this. And then plays like f3 and knight f2. And usually I have a pawn on e5. So this time around I just kind of wanted something original to mess with this development. Hence bishop g4. Still he plays f3. e4. Yeah, so I can... Maybe this is what I usually do. Take. And then if... Uh, take. Check. This endgame. I've definitely played this endgame at least once against him. Maybe, maybe I do play bishop g4 on move 2. What kind of blends together when you play online blitz? But uh, I played e6 this time, just keeping more pieces on the board. Still fell behind on the clock. But yeah, after h4, it's important to react properly, because if I play a meek move like h6, well, then he gets to take, and I have to take with the f-pawn, which is kind of unfortunate. You can see that my e6 pawn is particularly weak now, and he has the bishop pair. Probably bishop h3 is an easy way to play it. So I wanted to make sure that in the event of a plan like knight f4 and h4, I could play this move e5. And I was expecting him to play knight takes d5, knight takes d5, e takes d5, queen takes, and then something like h5, bishop f5, and I thought my bishop would escape, and um, I don't know. I like black's position. Uh, white's position makes a strange impression. Uh, but he played h5 take here. And now I have a choice. I'm kind of curious what the engine thinks is best because I can try to bank a pawn and play f takes g3 and allow Check. this. But as I was describing, my king becomes a little unsafe on the f7 square and this g3 pawn is not likely to have a high life expectancy. I think it's going to get taken pretty soon and I don't know if I can justify the damage to my king. Let's just see what the engine says. Yeah, engine likes white. Wants to start running me over with the pawns. So I think I made the right call, just taking with the f-pawn right away. And then here, I probably should have played knight h5 immediately. I didn't know how to how strong, notice how strong this move was until I played it on the next move. But if I had done it immediately, then I'd be attacking here, threatening knight g3, and I think forcing queen h2, which seems like a concession, taking white's queen away from the center and... Uh, it's in a defensive role. Yeah, I like black's position, knight c6. I don't even have to go about attacking the f4 pawn again. That pawn is weak. I can just let it sit there for now. Computer prefers white for some reason slightly, but <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think black would be the easier side to play there. So c3, a natural move, stopping knight d4, but now it likes knight, knight h5 even more so than on the previous move. So knight h5 and the same problem. I'm threatening knight g3 and knight takes f4. So my opponent played queen h2. Or no, they should have played queen h2. They played knight b3 instead. But And here, if I castle, black is much better. What if they play f5? There's bishop d6. Okay, and black has dark, or white has dark square problems. Um, the g3 square is weak. Yeah, this doesn't look good. So knight b3, allowing knight g3. And I've won the exchange, and white doesn't have any particular compensation. I mentioned this before in videos, but knights that are on b3, b6, or g3, g6, they often get chased by enemy rook pawns. It's a good device to look for. So that knight on b3 is susceptible to being attacked by this pawn. And actually, the engine wants to do it immediately, a5. I played queen b6, bishop d2, a5. Oh, white could castle here. Just take their king to safety. Maybe they should do that. And then after, say, a5, uh, knight a1, <laughs> the knight doesn't make a good impression on the a1 square, but the most important thing is white appears to be able to keep the position closed on that wing. So at least they are probably not going to uh, fall under a direct attack. But still, black is doing well up the exchange. So they played rook b1. I jumped in knight b4. 
Yeah, and here I definitely think I should have played knight check. c2 check, and then wherever the king goes, just knight e3 immediately thereafter. And I'm doing this to weaken the defense of f4 and take white's uh, better bishop. I think that dark square bishop has potential to be somewhat bothersome. The light square bishop I'm not that worried about. So I think this would be a, an excellent trade of my knight for their bishop. And I think f4 is just likely to fall. So I should have done that right away. Oh, and there's also check. knight c2 check king here and this move. That idea I did not consider whatsoever. In the game, it wasn't possible because white had a knight on b3. Oh, but that's nifty. Yeah, and there's a pin. If b takes a3, queen takes b1. And then I'm up two exchanges. But I castled and then did this. Oh yeah, that's right. I played knight takes a2. I'm a little scatterbrained this video. It's kind of late at night. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, knight takes a2. Check. Queen b3 check, forking the king in the knight. Yeah, and again, I should be doing very well. King h8, just a prophylactic move against queen e6. White made it messy enough to um, complicate the issue, though. Yeah, and here after uh, bishop h3, they just decided to go right back to f1 because they realized that this pawn is weak. So now I'm at minus four. Minus four and a half, <laughs> creeping closer to minus five. So I should definitely win a4. Ah, bishop f2. Yeah, that would be a good move. This is the same idea as earlier, knight c2 to e3. So trying to get the bishop in and enforce a trade of the dark square bishops. That's a nice way of prosecuting black's advantage. The white's queen isn't doing anything here on d7. You can see that b7 is protected by my queen, and uh, my back rank is protected. I just played a4, and here I made it trickier on myself than it had to be. I was debating between bishop g3 right away going after this pawn, or take, take, then bishop g3. And in hindsight, this should probably be preferred. Not sure why I really rejected this. I didn't think it really mattered. I just liked my queen on b3, and I was anticipating um, if a queen trade occurred that white would have to take some time to untangle, and I own the a-file. But actually, in doing that, I allowed them to keep queens on the board, which is definitely white's best practical try. And you can see they're still dead lost, but uh, keeping queens on the board is... Oh, I'm up to minus 7.5. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I was at a minute 30. Still should be enough to win, but... So rook takes f4 is good. Yeah, because they can't take bash checkmate. into checkmate. Nice crisscross checkmate right here. Uh, I took with the bishop instead. Take, take, bishop e2, defending the pawn, rook h4, that's what I played, king d2, rook h2, okay, I played a3, rook h2, why is that so strong? If queen takes d4, oh, just this tactic. Check. Take, take, check. queen c2, check, mm-hmm. Nice fork. Was that possible in the game, too? a3, queen takes, here, guess not. Yeah, now I could play rook h2, but I'm a little behind where I want to be. Rook a1 is possible using the pin. Yeah, so suffice it to say, there were multiple uh, accurate, more accurate routes that I could have taken to win this game down the stretch. Under a minute, it becomes something of a crapshoot whether I'm going to find these routes, though. Yeah, queen c3. Computer likes queen b6. I was trying to get into f2 with that move. Here, queen over, d5. Check. In hindsight, though, like I was saying, I, I think if I were going to trade queens, I should have done it a few moves ago, right here. I mean, this is still a huge advantage, but with white's pawns being so mobile and having two connected pawns, e and d, if those get a little bit further, it may not matter that I have such a material advantage. You know, it's one of those things, like, if they hit the 5th or the 6th rank together, um, I could be on the defensive in a heartbeat. Check. Okay, so here, queen h4 was better. Yeah, it's getting a little harder to convert. Check. Honestly, I think a draw is, like, not bad from here, given the time differential. He's got a 4-to-1 time advantage. 
and knew this was going to get dicey. Probably moving the C-pawn doesn't help White too much. I think they should just power through the E-pawn instead. And some crazy scenario like, you know, something like this is what would be a nightmare for Black having the position that I had previously. Because uh, now it's like, okay, maybe I'm still winning, but I'm facing two connected pawns on the sixth rank. So, but they push the C pawn, I guess, making way for bishop C4, but that doesn't seem as good. Rook G2, I think I played some accurate moves. And then they sacrifice the bishop for the pawn. D6. Yeah, and I missed D7 right here. I just assumed that uh, white had to Check. take on H2, and then I was going to win and just put my rook behind the pawn. Uh, my king can come over to help if necessary. Completely missed d7. Yeah, and all of a sudden, this isn't so easy anymore. Because if I play rook a8 trying to stop the pawn, well, then my h-pawn passer is eliminated. I saw that line, and I saw that I'd still be up a rook, but as you can see, uh, white has compensation now. Amazingly. Huh. King g8, rook b2, going out to the b7 pawn. And if white wins that, they'll have three connected pass pawns. Not fun. Check. So I took on h1, and Check. white does have a perpetual. Check. If I try to come out to f7, I think I would only be asking for it. Not only does white have a multitude of checks, there's also queen d5, which would fork the king and the rook. I don't know white can even take that rook, because I would have a rook check followed by promotion after that. But with, with 10 seconds on my clock, I'm not going to tempt fate here. I just play queen h7. They hit their king. Yeah, computer says I can play some very hard to find move, rook a8, to keep the game going. That way the back rank is guarded, so queen Check. h4 uh, would not be bothering me with a perpetual anymore. But 0% uh, <laughs> chance I find rook a8. Nor would I even want to play that, I think, with this amount of time. So I just moved this out Check. of the way, and Check. he Check. took a draw, because otherwise I'm queening and um, debatable whether white could flag me. With, with that amount of time. So I'm disappointed I didn't win this game, uh, but it was a fun game nonetheless. So it was, it was a pretty thrilling one to play. Yeah, just multiple better ways to convert this position. That's what it boils down to. So time management could have been better. If I could change one decision, I think I would have rather played queen takes b5 and then bishop g3 on this move right here, instead of bishop g3 and allowing that queen to survive. That would be the decision I would change. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.